I would like to introduce our team, Fabio, Katharina, Milan, and myself, Ji Yoon. Our project was to come up with a long-term strategy for legacy case studies <coughs> of the uh, Olympic Games. In our presentation, we'll go through project objectives, methodology, recommendations, and conclusion. Before we go into details about our presentation, we would like to talk about uh, what Olympic legacy is. When an athlete crosses the finish line at an Olympic Games, the story of those games is far from over. Today, Olympic legacy, what's left behind is just as important as the sporting spectacle itself. These days, Olympic success is not just measured in medals, records and in iconic images. It's as much about the lasting benefits that the Games can bring to the whole city and nation. Historically though, legacy hasn't always been part of the planning process, but now things are very different. When the city is elected to host the Olympic Games, it's not just writing its place into the history books. It has a very clear opportunity to create lasting change for its citizens long after the Games is finished. can be defined in two ways. The tangible legacies, sports venues, urban renewal, transportation, the environment, the economy, and just as important, the intangible legacies, national pride, cultural awareness, a healthy lifestyle, and community involvement. Legacies that can make a real difference in people's everyday lives. The International Olympic Committee plays an important role in transferring knowledge um, from one Olympic Games to another. One way to transfer knowledge is, um, is through, through the use of uh, legacy case studies. Kennedy Cities and future Olympic organizing committees has an access to the details on the legacy initiatives implemented by previous Canada cities and Olympic organizing committees. In order to illustrate the scope and diversity of uh, Olympic legacy, explain the challenges and highlight the opportunities in implementation and provide recommendation. Currently, I, the IOC has approximately 40 legacy case studies um, from past five years covering the games from 2000 onwards, predominantly Vancouver and London. This is an example of the um, legacy case studies from Vancouver 2010. Uh, it shows um, how a company constructed a power smart village to show, how, to show what the companies were doing for sustainability and also how they were doing it, um, which highlighted the latest energy efficient technologies. Now Katarina will talk about our project objectives. So our main objective for the project was to develop a long-term strategy for legacy case studies. And that was then divided into two different areas. So first, how, what are the stories to be told? What are the themes that should be selected for the future case studies? And the second part was, how should the stories uh, be told? So what are the guidelines for the content and the format of the future case studies? So to uh, reach these uh, objectives, we created an action plan. First, we had to do research. We had to uh, read through uh, the existing case studies, um, explore the IOC extranet, uh, read through the Olympic Legacy Guide, um, as well as the candidature files for uh, Rio 2016, uh, Pyeongchang 2018, and the three candidate cities for 2020. 
Um, then we also uh, examined uh, academic articles related to Olympic legacy. And then after this uh, was done, we wanted to gain an even deeper um, understanding of the situation, both from the end user perspective, uh, for which we interviewed uh, the legacy departments at the organizing committees of Pyeongchang 2018 and Rio 2016. Uh, from the IOC perspective, we wanted to see how legacy fits into the whole uh, process of knowledge transfer. So we uh, interviewed two representatives from the Olympic Games Knowledge Management Department uh, in order to do that. After that, we, established, we had the current situation established um, and we could then start making recommendations um, how to uh, create a process for the selection of the appropriate themes for the future case studies and then also the guidelines to the format and the content of the future case studies. Uh, and Fabio will now um, introduce our strategy to do this and then also uh, the uh, criteria for the theme selection. So after our meetings with Michelle, uh, we have to define the strategy for the case studies. So in order to do that, we first needed to find out who are the end users. So as, as they said, it's the cities thinking about bidding for the games and the candidate, candidate cities. And they need this kind of information in the very early stage of the planning phase of organizing the games. And so then the strategy that we recommended was to use the case studies as something to inspire the cities, to showcase all the positive legacies that they can have by organizing the games. And therefore, it should be uh, less detailed than a knowledge report or technical manual. It should be something more high level inspirational. And in order to select the themes uh, for the case studies, legacy is a very broad uh, area. So we created two approaches. The first approach is a top down approach that we call. So uh, this will be made up front when the, the organizing committees start to organize the games and it will be, uh, the case studies would be defined using the candidature files of that city. So from the objectives of the city, we can know what they are planning to do regarding legacy and from that on we can break down uh, and create the themes for the case studies. And the other approach would be using during the, the organization of the games. It's a bottom-up approach, we call it, which is a pro process to work like a filter uh, to analyze future ideas for case studies. So when something new appear, then you have a process to define, is this relevant? This should be a new case study or not? So just to try to, to make it uh, more understandable, we have some examples. Uh, the top-down, we, we analyze the file, the candidature file of real. And, uh, 2016, and from that you can have, you know, all the objectives that the city wants. So, for example, they have they want better air quality, so you, they should have a case study about that. So then you can follow because the case study is not going to be written after the games. You have to collect information in the organizational phase before the games. And the bottom-up approach, which is, a, which is a process to analyze the, the potential of a case study, uh, would have a maximum of three phases. And the uh, first phase is an eliminatory phase to make sure that the, the potential case study is really a long-term legacy and that it's really caused by the games. And then the, the potential case study moves to a, a phase two where we have general questions uh, to ask the case study. We'll show an example later. And then we can have three outcomes. The case study can be approved, can be rejected, or then if it lies in between, we can move to another phase then it will be analyzed in a more deep way. Uh, so the third phase would have a set of questions to each kind of legacy. There are five different types of legacy according <coughs> to the Olympic Legacy Guide. And so in this phase, they will be uh, assessed using these questions that we, we have created, and then we decide if it's a relevant case study or not. So an example for a new public transformation city system in a city organizing the games, the phase one, we have the two general questions. Is this long term and was this really created or facilitated by organizing of the games? In these two, it's okay. 
Uh, and then we have a set of questions, general questions, for example, is this aligned with the overall legacy of the objectives of the game? Uh, how many people would be impacted, or is it a significant number of not? Does it promote Olympism? <coughs> Uh, etc. So in this case, the, the score is not sufficient to be uh, approved. So we move, move, would move to the third phase, and on the third phase, we have specific questions. And on this example, it will be approved. It's it's kind of complex, so we're not going to show all the details. And so this would be how to select the themes, so that the stories that should be told. And Katarina will now talk about how they should be told what kind of content and format they should have. So following the, the strategy of creating inspirational stories for the future um, organizing cities, we identified some be best practices from the existing case studies and then created uh, guidelines for both the content and then the, the format or the delivery of the, the future case studies. So we. When it comes to content, we identified five key elements that should be included uh, in each of the case studies. We wanted to keep, it, keep the recommendations very high level since each legacy project is, is very different from another and therefore also the case studies will be very different from another. But these are the five um, elements that are key for any, any topic. First, uh, introduction to context, so really show uh, in which environment uh, did the project take place, if there were any environmental or economic or social issues, uh, why this legacy initiative was implemented. Uh, that's an important part to show um, right from the get-go when, when you explain the, the legacy project. The second uh, element is, to, is the one that will actually be very different from one case study to another since it is the, the core of the case study really explaining the project. Um, why was it done? Uh, who was it done for? Um, what was the, the scope of it, for example? So all the key issues that should be outlined about that specific project. Uh, the third element is uh, the challenges and successes that were uh, faced during the process. Um, if there were any problems that were faced, um, were they overcome? If there were, was it even a success story that was built out of it? All this is very key uh, for the future cities when they plan for their projects and really bring that inspiration. Um, and the fourth um, is about the outcome and impact of the project. If it is still ongoing, which is uh, in many times the case when it comes to legacy initiatives, to show where we are at that moment and what are the uh, expected outcomes, or if it's already finalized, to show real data on what was, what was the outcome or impact of that specific project. Fifth and final element is the advice to future cities, which is key for, for th that is basically why the case studies exist. To, to reflect upon what did we do right, what did we do wrong, what would be something that could be advised to the future cities to take into consideration in their planning and implementation of their own projects. Then the second uh, guideline was more about the format, and again, it had to be very high level since each of the project is very different. Uh, but again, following the strategy that it has to be inspirational, uh, first, we identified that images, they have power, they can really transfer those messages more efficiently and effectively than plain words can. Second, uh, text boxes for key messages are a very useful tool to ease the reader through the document and really identify effectively and efficiently, uh, again, what are the key messages related to that project and if they are relevant for the planning of uh, the project of the reader. Then thirdly, um, to really remind the authors to keep the, the content relevant and not include irrelevant information or make the, make the um, case study too promotional, for example. So really consider the reader when writing it. Uh, fourth element is a recommendation to also use videos as a supporting tool, as we saw earlier in our presentation. Um, it is uh, something that you can really capture uh, some key ideas very efficiently in a short video clip, um, and therefore it's also a useful tool when trying to transfer some inspirational messages. 
And now uh, here is a um, great example of use both of images and a text box uh, in these uh, Whistler case studies from Vancouver Olympics. Um, they really uh, used uh, efficiently both images, <coughs> text boxes, different columns for different topics and really identifying what is the content uh, in this specific section. And therefore, the read was very easy and, uh, and effective. And now I will give the floor to Milan, who will give you the conclusions of our project. To conclude, I would like to summarize the most important point of our approach to define the criteria for uh, a case study that is relevant uh, as a as it, uh, can be defined as a case study. But at first, I would like to mention that <coughs> it is very important that case studies is one of the most important uh, information sources for future uh, candidate and future cities. There is so. <laughs> <laughs> There is so, because case study not only uh, transfer uh, best, uh, best uh, ex uh, experience from one city to another, I mean, the, uh, from the past city to the future, but they are also one of the best source of inspiration for the future cities. In order to be a, a, a best inspiration source, we should uh, transfer as much as possible the best uh, experience from the uh, previous cities to the future cities. We also, uh, uh, for, this, uh, for this reason, uh, we should avoid to uh, go too much to the details of the technicals uh, of the case studies. So we should avoid uh, to the technical uh, details. We should uh, also claim that a good uh, case study should uh, have a high level approach needed and also uh, case study should follow legacy objectives of the candidate files. Thank you. Thank you.